the T-plus camp, but changes over the winter by Jim Harvey and crew in Seattle in the aerodynamics and hydrodynamics have improved Steve David's ride in the boat they campaigned last year. Parked next door here in the Dallas pit is a radically designed new two-wing boat, which the T-plus team will debut later this season. Inside look at unlimited hydroplane racing. Hi, I'm Steve David. Welcome to the cockpit of an unlimited hydroplane. What's above my head comes from an F-16 canopy, and what's next to me is made out of Kevlar and carbon fiber. This is the latest safety advance from unlimited hydroplanes to make drivers like myself safe in the event of a crash. Let's take a look inside the cockpit, and we'll talk about some of the instrument and gauges. The instrumentation is really basic. To begin with, the speedometer, oil pressure gauges for the gearbox, and a, basically a tachometer for a turbine. You notice it all slanted. That's so in a quick glance. If everything up is around noon, we know the engines are working OK, and I don't have to worry about anything but driving them. What you're seeing now is called the canard wing. When it's up like this, it keeps the bow down in the event we have a lot of headwind. When running downwind, it goes down like so, and it gives the driver control to try and prevent the boat from what we call blowing over or basically going over backwards. What powers a modern unlimited hydroplane is a turbine engine. It's basically a shaft jet that's connected to a gearbox. The prop shaft then goes back underneath the boat and it's connected to a propeller. The tube here is really just to dissipate heat. It, it's not jet thrust like you'd have in an airplane. Troy here is working on what's called the hot section of the engine, which is the section that produces the power to make the boat go forward. Thanks for joining us this week on Unlimited Hydroplanes 101. Join us next week for a wrap-up and a test. We're going to be one less in the field right now. The Budweiser will be out of action. He just hooked to the left and hit the tide in the right quarter panel. The Budweiser is taking on water as they come up for the start. Budweiser is down in corner number two, trying to get off the course. There he is, Chip Anhauer. Oh, he has won everything all day today. He has hurt that left sponson. He's taking on water. He's on the starter. He's going to get off the course. We're about to do that start right now, minus this Budweiser. Well, that's a main challenger out of the field, but certainly some fast boats remain, and it's going to even the field out just a little bit as they come down. They take the green flag, and they're off heading down into turn number one. It looks like T-plus on the outside. Stephen David of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, riding hard on the pedal. He is going to take the lead on the outside. Now, remember the boat on the outside of the course has more course to cover. Circus Circus very hard on the inside. Dave Bilwak trying to close him down as they hit the straightaway. As we look at our leader, the Winston Eagle went across the starting line first, is down in corner number one, dead in the water, and we're getting a report by radio. He lost the propeller. Stephen David doesn't know that at this point. He's just concentrating on one thing, and that's staying ahead of Circus Circus. And you can see it is a battle out there. Stephen David still on the outside, holding his lane. Very important. Got a little bit loose as he comes down by the start-finish line. Steve David doing a good job and putting it right on the ragged edge. Waves a little bit to the crowd. Comes down. He's loving it, you can tell. Steve David, a national champion in many limited boats, has yet to win an unlimited event. This could be his first. He has certainly run well in the T-plus all day long. That boat has been a tremendous challenge to the field all the way across. And this boat, Circus Circus, has come out on this course and done some phenomenal things. It went from being nose-heavy to light, and now it's riding fine. Mark Tate, very disappointed. You see the cockpit coming up on that boat. That boat dead in the water. Winston Eagle, disappointed, I know. There's Kellogg's, Frosted Flakes in third place. That's Mike Hansen out of Madison, Indiana. Another boat that has made tremendous strides in the offseason. As we look at our number two place boat, the Circus Circus. He's going to be challenged by Kellogg's. And if we look at our leader now, the bleeding lap, number two of five. This is a five lapper. I'm going to bet that if you talk to Steve David after this race, I'm going to bet he's going to tell you that boat is designed to ride light like that. He, That's the way they believe it. He has a brand new boat that was to be in this race, but they had an accident with the truck hauling it, so this is last year's model. And we might also add that that's a repaired model because it had some damage done early on. There's the tide boat, George Woods Jr. riding in fourth place right at the moment. Seems to be a little bit content, going to see if possibly he can let those other guys knock each other out and move up in the field. Let me tell you, he has extensive damage on the right rear. He cannot go as fast as usual. Parts are coming off the boat. That's because of that collision with the Miss Budweiser earlier on. Apparently, the Miss Budweiser hooking in front of the tide boat. I don't think there'll be any blame uh, placed on any drivers in that particular situation. Here right comes now, the challenge. Here comes the challenge. Right. On the outside, Kellogg's crossed in flakes. 
It is Mike Hansen passing up Circus Circus. We just commented how well that boat has run in this first race, and you can see the power he's finding. This boat, partially owned by the folks of Madison, Indiana, and I know right now they are thrilled to death with the way that boat is going. They're fighting into corner number two here on lap number three as we look at our leader about to pass the Superior Racing Team at lap Ken Muscatel, who was the trailer boat. We're now getting word from the URC radio that the Circus Circus is penalized an extra lap for a lane encroachment against Kellogg's. That moves the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes to second. All right, I, that should be going out onto the course by radio to Mike Hansen right at this moment. We'll see now if he takes up the challenge, the gauntlet, if you will, from the lead boat and this is the lead boat here black and yellow in color and riding a little bit on the light side but the driver loving it Stephen David there is the boat that was just penalized for an encroachment that's kind of disappointing but as we say these boats slide on the turn sometimes they do it and it's very unintentional well you saw a problem with the Miss Budweiser just prior to the start hooking to the left suffering extensive damage to the left sponson in the front and then causing extensive damage to the right rear of the Tide, who is running awfully slow. George Woods just trying to finish this race for points. There you see Ken Muscatel's boat now. I know that Ken would like to be up running in the front, but right now he's probably happy to just be competing. That is the trailer boat. He got into this field because the only race that he was able to get into all day, he won, and that was the last chance coming in. There's your checkered flag up off the starter's tower. It is the Miss Team Plus for the first unlimited hyperplane racing win for Stephen David of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This crew prepared the boat, got it ready. What a moment. We'll be back with more action on the Winning Driver interview from the Louisville Lake after this timeout. He plus the winner today, Kellogg second, followed by the Tide, Circus Circus, and Superior Racing. Lots of fun had by all here just outside Dallas, but nobody had more fun than the winner, Steve David. Let's go down to Dick Crippen in the pits. Well, hey, Steve... I don't know what to tell you. I saw your face when you came in. I think I, I saw it on the face, out on the course. Oh, God. It was a... Oh, there's one of many. Huh? Oh, man. You know, <laughs> you we said if I... you can't win them all if you don't win the first. But this team, after doing what I did the first heat, making that error, and, and these guys building that boat to come back like it did in this final, T-plus and every one of these guys are just the very best. Well, Steve, I'll tell you, this crew really did work to bring that boat back. You did have some problems. You had some structural damage. Obviously, you trust the crew tremendously, but they knew what you could do also. Oh, yeah, I trust this crew with my life. I mean, I do. I go out and I don't worry about anything. The driving, they, the T-plus is fast and as hard as I can because I know they've done the right thing. Harvey is the owner. Tim Rams is crew chief. And Tom and Jim and Bob and Jeff and Bruce and, and Troy, they're the best. So they pass the word. There's the green flag. We're off and running. Winston Eagle is on the inside. We'll have the advantage going into the turn, but it's going to be a tough hold for him because it is a very tight course. You can see the looseness of Circus Circus. As they come down around turn number two, we see nothing but rooster tails, but it looks like something happened. It looks as though they all bunched up there in the apexes of corner one and two with Winston and the Eagle on the inside. Look at He's lost his tail. And there has been some damage to the circus. Circus, red flares are now going out. Red flares are going out. We have a boat on the beach. This is a wild situation that we're going to have to sort out as we go. And we can take a look, perhaps, from upstairs and see exactly what happened. But the T-plus is on the beach right now. Look at the nose, the front end of the circus circus. It appeared that the circus circus hit into the back end of the Winston. Now, we'll have to determine whether Winston actually slid out and across lanes or what happened there. But the T-plus, Stephen David had no place to go. He was in his lane and apparently hit into the back end of the Circus Circus. And Steve, turn one, Miami Marine Stadium, nothing new. No, it's a real tight one, and I know all the guys are racing hard. There's no blame to be put. Just apparently, I guess, Winston hooked and went across the Circus, and then the Circus smashed into my left side and uh, took out a sponsor. But uh, it just, you know, it happens at high speed. It's... Uh, I, I can't blame Tate. He was just trying to win the race. I think the uh, Department of Environmental Services might want to talk to you about those trees you took out. Uh, yeah, when uh, Circus hit me, we lost our steering, and all I saw was trees at 200 mile an hour. But uh, we'll go replant some seedlings and uh, make this a better earth when I leave it. <laughs> How about the boat? Can you replant that? Uh, there's a lot of damage to that left sponsor, and uh, I don't know if we'll have it ready or not for today. These guys will sure try, though, and try to get the T-plus back in the water.
Back at Firebird Lake, Dick Crippen along with Steve Montgomery and Jim Hendrick as two boats. Scott Pierce in the Ron Jones Marine Entry and Steve David in the T-Plus Engine Treatment are on the course warming up for the next round. Steve, it's been a rather interesting weekend so far for Steve David. That's right, Dick. We talked about how the small, tight race course puts tremendous hydraulic pressure on the boat's hardware. Earlier in qualifying, this was Steve David going into the turn. The skid fin breaks a bolt. It's loose now. The boat is out of control, and Steve literally parks it on the beach. And probably what saved the boat from serious damage was the fact that Steve saw what was happening and shut down the turbine. But look at this view. This is the view Steve had at this point right here. The boat is out of attitude. You can see the tilt on the horizon and right here dick is a view out the front window that a boat racer never wants to see it's called terra firma land well it was an amazingly smooth trip over that land for this boat but what happened to the boat we asked steve david that turnbuckle snapped at the apex of the turn and that allowed the boat to ride up on the turn fin and, and just keep going to the shoreline the, the guys built a terrific boat uh, the testimony that's still on one piece and i have every confidence to get it fixed and, and we'll get around this race course again this is in lane four, T-plus engine treatment with Steve David. And on the outside, it'll be the Miss Bustler Enterprises, driven by Jerry Hopp. All the boats are up and running. It looks like we're going to have a good start. There it is. The green flag is out. T-plus has taken a lead as they come down that front straightaway. Let's see if he can hold on to a T-plus in lane number four. Oh! T-plus goes up and over. Steve David, there you see the reaction on the dock. Steve David has gone over in the T-plus. The boat literally took off of the water. It looked like he might have walked it just a little bit. It appears there's a hole in the sponson about the size of a bowling ball. I don't know whether that happened before. I have to look at the debris that's floating around in the water. The driver's still inside the boat. That driver, Steve David, has oxygen supplied to his mass. He is underwater. The rescue team is on the way. A very concerned pit area with owner Jim Harvey looking on. And as I said, the rescue team is trained. Eric Stylow and his crew travel to each and every race, and they know how to get into each and every boat from the bottom down to get him out of there. He has about 10 minutes of air available to him inside the boat, and that mask is fit very tightly over his nose and mouth so he can breathe that air in. He is strapped into a cockpit. The cockpit itself is uh, really built separate from the boat, and if the boat should totally break apart, that cockpit is designed to stay whole. He is covered by an F-16 canopy. It is supposed to be as watertight as possible. Now you can see Eric Stilo has gone onto the boat. He's opening the hatch. Let's watch closely and see how Steve David responds as they get to him. I'm sure that by now the cockpit is underwater. There you can see he's kicking to get out. He's kicking to get out of there. He was just waiting for him to open that hatch up. Boy, They're talking look, to him. Look at that hole in that Sponson. That either water damage, probably just part of impact, or maybe it took that way when he did impact. But I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of damage to that boat. Let's look at it in slow motion. Steve David is leading the pack as they go down into turn number one. Now you'll see nothing but rooster tails, but watch very closely. All of a sudden, the T-plus gets airborne. He's got nothing but water and air in front of him. No other boats, no other disturbances. He flies out of the water just like a kite, comes down hard on that inside left sponson, thus the hole probably caused by the crash. Let's take a look at it from up above. You can see him start to fly there. His turn comes right out of the water. He does almost a 180, and he lands, as you said, on the inside sponson. And boy, he was a long time and a long distance out of that water before he landed, Dick. Here's Steve David on shore being loaded into the ambulance. Steve David yelling to Bernie, little I was beating you, man. 